This episode is sponsored by Hunter Killer. Welcome to the True Facts Animal Awards. Celebrating animals with awards. No, I'm not going to say... Fine, co-produced by Jerry. I mean, that ruined the intro. In the category, Things That Look Just Like Ants, we have an honorable mention. Uh, I should point out that it is an ant, because someone forgot to specify things that aren't ants that look like ants. As a runner-up, we have a spider in the genus Myrmaplata. Jenny, this one looks more like an ant and a half. And look right there, an ant's face doesn't split down the middle all of a sudden. No wonder it's second place. Let's see the winner. Jerry, that's another real ant. Fooled you? <laughs> it's not, it's a spider. <laughs> From the front, it's not fooling anyone. It's more like an ant ass mimic, really. Could be its own category. In the category of your, Jerry, your mom's not a category. Bet she had plenty of entries though. <laughs> Burn. Do a real one. Oh, that's better. In the category of least inviting orifice. Honorable mention to Millie here. Good job, Billy. Terrifying orifice. And it's a good reminder never to pick up a hippopotamus up by the top of it. You pick a hippopotamus up by the bottom. No, Jerry, I told you we're not doing the sea cucumber. Well, because it is inviting. No, no, not for me. For the fishes and the crabs that live up in there. Disqualified. Jerry, that's another sea cucumber. What do you mean, wait for it? Oh, God. It keeps coming, but it doesn't change anything, Jerry. The, I'm saying the orifice itself is still inviting. It's what's coming out that's gross. Read the rules. The runner-up goes to the bloodworm Glycera dibranchiata. Got a mouth like the devil's fleshlight, but it might be more inviting than the winner, which is a friggin' penguin mouth. They got extra points because they're cute on the outside, so it's like a fake-out. But their tongues and the roof of their mouth are covered with these spiny papillae. Helps with the fish swallowing, apparently. It's what you get when you don't evolve teeth. The penguin was also an entry in the category Hell No I Wouldn't French Kiss That, but that award went to this friggin' thing. This right here is Renatra linearis, also known as a water scorpion or a water stick insect. But I'll tell you right now, from the point of view of the fishes, it's more like a water dick insect. They have these grabby grabby little front arms which they use to- oh look at that. It looks like he's using the duckweed like a little Halloween mask. <laughs> Anyway, when they catch the fishes, they pierce them with this crazy proboscis that comes out the mouth hole. And then they have another thing that comes out and slurps up the insides. <laughs> I mean, look at that. You're not going to make friends tongue f***ing a fish corpse like that. Anyway, congratulations, winner. French kissing that would be like a reverse colonoscopy. No, I'm right, Jerry. That's a reverse. No, what you're saying is not the reverse. No, a colon that probes a finger is essentially the same procedure. It just changes who's in charge. Oh, the finger would pay for it? All right, well, I'll give you that. In the category why I wouldn't want to be a goat, the winning entry was a goat. Listen, we've all peed on ourselves a little, right? On accident or in the shower. But it turns out when a male goat is in rut, and I don't mean in a rut like depressed, which would make more sense to me. I mean like horny. It urinates on its own face. And not in like the spirit of youthful experimentation. It's more of a full on soak the beard thing. Apparently the female goats are into it. I mean no judgment, but it's not my thing. Congratulations, winner. In the category of, oh, so that's what you sound like, we had some notable entries. There's the cheetah, fearsome predator. But when it talks, it sounds a bit like a mouse trying to rev a tiny lawnmower. The damn thing won't start. The lynx, certainly a majestic animal. But during mating season, they sound like two drunk fraternity brothers badly dubbing a samurai movie. But the winner is the koala. Because come on, who doesn't want a koala? One of the cutest things in the world, cuddly. But they sound a bit like a donkey trying to swallow a choking pig. <coughs> Sounds like when you try to get the last of your drink through a straw, but your straw's a tuba. <coughs> like a jackhammer in a bouncy castle. <coughs> we'll be right back with more awards like most creative use of mucus and worst wasps. But first, a message about our sponsor. I recently enjoyed a game by Hunter Killer. They have a whole bunch of these murder mysteries where you get to play the detective. This one here is the one that I played. It's called Dead on the Vine, and I had to figure out who killed Gail, the matriarch of a winemaking family. The whole thing is delivered to you in a box, and each box is like having your own personal escape room. It's filled with evidence, like police reports, bank statements, maps, photographs, all the clues you need to solve the murder. And let me tell you, it sucks you in, because it's designed so ill it feels sort of real. 
I mean, look at that wine charm and stopper. Maybe I did have some wine while I played. Increases the difficulty. There's a whole bunch of themes to choose from, including collaborations with Nancy Drew, Agatha Christie, and Blair Witch. You can get a single game, a box set, or even a subscription. I had a lot of fun playing, and if you're looking for a gift for yourself or someone else, head over to huntakiller.com slash zayfrank and use code Z-E-F-R-A-N-K. You'll get to take advantage of killer discounts, get it? And limited edition merchandise during their month of mystery. I'm a fan and happy to have them as a sponsor. Where were we? Oh, right. In the category of things that look just like leaf... Jerry, you did it again, didn't you? Yep, that's an actual leaf, Jerry. It's not the spirit of... Oh, that's better. Some good entries. Here's the Indian leafwing butterfly. Then there's the green phyllidae. Excellent. But the winner was this frog. Fooled you? <laughs> it's not a frog. It's a leaf pretending to be a frog by the artist Rocco Inoue. I flipped it on you. <laughs> In the category of most adorable thief, the runner-up is the boxer crab. Look at it. <laughs> it steals these little anemones, which become these stingy pom-poms which it uses to defend itself against predators. But since it's holding onto the pom-poms, it can't use its little crab hands to eat, so it uses the tentacles of the anemone to pick up food particles. Come on, that's cute. But the winner in the category is this spider. Not the big one, it's the little one off to the side. It is a dewdrop spider, and it lives on the web of another spider. In this case, the Joro spider. Its butt is droplet-shaped and covered with a shiny material that makes it look like deer. It's thought that this somehow helps attract prey to the web, which the Joro spider then eats and the dewdrop spider snacks on as well. Look at that, it even does some repair work on the Joro's web. In the category least likely to be a team mascot, the winner is the marine spoonworm. Try putting that on a jersey, <laughs> let alone a tattoo. I mean, I guess you could work for the Denver D. In the category of best fashion accessory to murder, honorable mention goes to the parasitic fungus cordyceps, one of the most beautiful ways to die. Gotta bring some extra chalk to that murder scene. Runner-up goes to the barnacle Saculina carcini. The female Saculina invades a crab's body. It then castrates the crab and creates this sort of external mass that it uses to attract males. And as is the way in nature, the parasite benefits from the host's body, and the crab gets a huge pair of balls. The winner, however, is a parasitic flatworm called the green-banded brood sack. What happens is that a snail eats bird droppings that contain the eggs of this flatworm. The worms then sort of take over the snail's body and cause the snail to go out into the open. Then the worms go up into the snail's eye stalks and pretend to be caterpillars, which attracts birds to come and rip out the eyes of the snail, and thusly to complete the circle of life. In the category of an ass that's happy to see you, honorable mention goes to the Hawaiian happy face spider that's got a wonderful cheek-to-cheek -cheek smile. The spiny orb weaver also gets a nod. There's a bit of a creepy clown vibe. Jerry, what the hell's that? Did it just fart out an ant? It did, look at it. Jerry, that creepy doll face just farted out an ant. You don't see that in one of those Attenborough documentaries, do you? The Chilean four-eyed frog is the runner-up with an ass that you could lose a staring contest to. But the winning entry is from a team of researchers that paint eyes onto cow's butts. And not just for fun. These eye spots reduce the number of lion attacks on the herd. You try it, paint some eyes on your butt. I bet you don't get eaten by a lion. In the category of most creative use of mucus, this year's winner is the parrotfish, who looks very smug about it if you ask me. It creates a mucus cocoon which helps protect it from parasites while it sleeps. And after it's done with it, you got yourself an empty snot bag. You could play with it and put your weed in there. No, I'm not gonna show your entry, Jerry. Well, for one, because I don't believe you made all that mucus yourself. All right, well, thank you for admitting it, and I'm sorry too. In the category of worst waspus, I mean, take your pick, really, the winner is the jewel waspus. I'll tell you, no matter what you think of cockroaches, they don't deserve this. First, the wasp puts venom in the body of the cockroach to keep it from running. Then it stings it in the head to make it all loopy. The venom makes the cockroach docile and triggers it to start cleaning itself. You know, self-washing food. It's so tame at this point, it lets the wasp eat one of its antennas and suck out the juices. The wasp can lead the cockroach around like a pet, and it brings it back to its little nest of horror, lays an egg on it, and then the baby eats it out from the inside. A real dick move. Congratulations. So to appreciate this one, you have to imagine this ruffed grouse is listening to the end of a very impassioned speech. You know, like, So if you want to call me a chicken, that's fine, you call me a chicken. But I'll tell you right now, every goddamn one of us is a chicken. <laughs>